Asia Pacific winter season comes to an epic conclusion as we crown a champion. Eight of the top players from the Asia Pacific region have gathered to dust off their best decks and duel until only one player remains. The winner earns a spot at the Hearthstone World Championship, a $25,000 first place prize, and of course, bragging rights. Whose preparation, passion, and belief in the heart of the cards will lead them to victory? Pull up a chair and find out as the 2016 Hearthstone Asia Pacific Winter Championship begins. Welcome to the second day of the Hearthstone Asia Pacific Winter Championships. All eight players who started the tournament yesterday will be in action today, but by the end of the day, the field will be down to six as we conclude the day with elimination matches. My name is Papa Smithy, and I'm joined by Doe. That's right. Hi, guys. I'm Doe. It's going to be an awesome day of matches, dude. And we're starting things off with Korea versus Korea. It's going to be Dianee versus Handsome Guy. And we've casted these guys before. We've seen what they can do. But now they're in the winner's match. It's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting to see who comes out on top because it's a big deal, you know, no matter what. They're going to get to keep playing, even if they lose today, but you don't want to have to play that extra match. Yeah, it's a different type of match in a different setting, but guys, we will also be revealing another Whispers of the Old God card, God's card today. Uh, tomorrow, sorry, tomorrow. before the grand final match. Don't Not get today. my hopes up, Papa Smithy. I know. Don't do I'm that trying to me. raise the hopes, but we'll have to play them down for now. We'll have an excellent card for you tomorrow, but for now, let's see what TJ's up to at the sidebar. Thank you very much, Papa Smithy and Doa. That's right. Welcome, everybody, to the sidebar today. The intro, I'm joined by D2 and Brian Kibler. D2, as we all know, D2 stands for Day 2. So now that it's Day 2 of the Asia Pacific Winter Championships, <laughs> how excited are you? Very excited. My favorite day of all time, actually. Day 2 of anything. <laughs> Cool. Right. And yeah, going to be a good day. Yesterday was a pretty awesome day as well. Saw some Tempo Mage, saw some Warlock Paladin, didn't see Secret Paladin. Yeah. That's a surprise. So, I mean, great games overall and some kind of mind meltdowns at the end there as well. Maybe we see some of that today as well. So, uh, yeah, pretty excited. Yeah, lots of control decks, which uh, Brian Kibler, I'm sure, is, is excited about that. Brian Kibler, isn't it an exciting day to be Brian Kibler? It's always an exciting day to be Brian Kibler, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> no, today is going to be a, a great opportunity to see some more great matches. It's been really cool seeing how different the metagame is at this tournament compared to the previous championships from the Americas and Europe. So uh, I'm excited to see more. Yeah, well, we have two days left of the Age Pacific Winter Championship, but let's take a look at the schedule for today. We're going to start off with those winter matches. It is going to be Handsome Guy versus Da Huni. And then we're going to head over to Matsun versus Pin Ping Ho. Then for the second half of the day, we're going to head over to those elimination matches with Staz versus UCCU and Naviute versus Sogi. While we're taking a look at the brackets for Group A and Group B, we'll give you a little bit of a rundown of how it works. We split the eight players into two four-player double elimination groups. Today we're going to play through the winner's matches as well as a few of the elimination matches, which means at the end of the day today, we'll have two players that have moved on to the semifinals and two players that have been eliminated. Uh, but to give you guys a deeper look into the Hearthstone Championship Tour in its entirety, and also to let you know how these players all got here, we have Dan standing by Fireside. Dan, how are you doing over there, man? TJ, I'm doing great. It's a great day to be thrown in as well. Thanks for asking. Welcome to the Fireside, everybody, where the players will be facing off one versus one, playing best of five conquest with a ban to get ready to see who is moving on to the winner's match tomorrow or who will be eliminated. But we recognize that not everybody has been joining us along the championship tour for at least the Asia Pacific region. So let's catch you up to speed. Seven out of these eight players did end up getting their spots through the regional qualifiers, and that is through Southeast Asia, that is through Australia, Taiwan, etc. And the final player earned his spot, the handsome guy, to being number one on the overall Asia Pacific ranking. It's going to be a big challenge to see who was able to recover from day one, whether they lost was soul crushing, or they can continue their momentum. So make sure to get out there on social media and support them the best you can. Hashtag HCT and let us know on Facebook.com slash Hearthstone or Twitter.com slash play Hearthstone and follow along the action with us. I think we're ready to get underway. So the first game between Dahu Ni and Handsome Guy is about to get underway. So let's take Take a look at the match as we get ready to kick off day number two. Oh, 일단은 매일 만약에 진다고 해도 탈락이 아니라는 것을 위안이 되고요. Looks like yeah, he's just gonna he's just gonna concede and handsome guy with that controlling style. Apex 우승을 해서 시, 이제 블리즈컨 시드를 얻는 거에 한 걸음 가까워진 것 같아서 네 기분이 좋습니다. 
이길 거를 한두턴 전부터 알고 있어가지고 좀 마음이 호구했습니다. So there it is, Diane is going to take this series 3-1. 일단 제 컨디션 관리를 위해서 잠을 푹 자고 먹을 것도 좀잘 먹는 게 중요한 것 같고요. 뭐 게임은 이때까지 많이 해왔던 것이기 때문에 따로 특별히 연습을 한다기보다는 지금 그런 컨디션적인 부분이 중요한 것 같습니다. 보니까 지금 제 상대방 그 강인호 해성가이 선수랑 되게 거의 비슷한 것 같은데 미러전 배치 준비 열심히 해가지고 반드시 4강 먼저 올라가도록 하겠습니다. 제가 뭐 특이한 덱만 뭐 잘한다고 뭐 보, 보여주고 싶어하고 그러는 줄만 아시는 분들이 많은데 정형화된 덱도 역시나 또 수준급으로 잘한다는 걸좀 이번 대회 통해서 보여드리고 싶었습니다. 그래서 많이 좀 사람들한테 얘기를 안 했는데 이번에는 좀 약간 진지한 모습의 제 모습을 좀 보여드리고 싶습니다. 제 상대가 된 것에 대해서 좀 음, 불운하다고 생각하고 네 죄송하지만 제가 먼저 이겨서 올라가겠습니다. 형 있잖아요. 형은 잘하시니까 저한테 지셔도 아마 올라가실 거거든요. 살살 합시다. <웃음> Right, Hashtag Dione if you think he's going to pick up the win, or if Handsome Guy can right some of those wrongs of the past, hashtag Handsome Guy. So do that on Twitter or Facebook. But first of all, let's introduce our players. And our first player to introduce is Handsome Guy. Handsome Guy coming in, as you mentioned, he's there the he is. unique player. He's the one who qualified based on ladder points. Yeah, that's right. I mean, this guy has uh, played very, very well in ranked play in Hearthstone for uh, quite a while. I mean, so talk about somebody who knows the meta, somebody who knows what it takes to kind of win in a lot of matchups. And you have to wonder with uh, Dianne if, uh, if playing all those kind of fun decks maybe gives him a little bit less experience in that kind of normal style. And with the normal style, it's definitely one that Handsome Guy has mastered. But you kind of alluded to it, Dianne, he's the one with the unique decks. He's the one with the unique personality. And we're going to introduce now the Dianne. Yep, there he is. Korea's most popular Hearthstone streamer Look swaggering the up to Handsome Guy. He beckons him over. A polite shake of the hand. But Dianne, he was in control of that introduction right there. He's the guy offering the hand and making Handsome Guy shake it. Actually a unique thing, you know, there was actually a lot of healthy respect for Handsome Guy from Dianne. He's the younger of the players, so usually in Korean culture, he's the one supposed to show the respect. The respect didn't yeah. seem to extend well, to the handshake. Well, guess what, Papa Smithy? We're in America now. That's true. That's right. So Dianne, he can do whatever he wants. It's a land of freedom. A land of freedom. Well, That's right. <laughs> full display in that particular regard. Now we have this all Korean match, you know, with the Ojen Hearthstone Masters mm -hmm. Korean cast and crew. It all fits. Yeah, and uh, Dahini, again, the player to win the Korean preliminaries to get to this event, and he played extremely well in those. And he, he didn't really play the wackiest stuff ever. There's a lot of gold monkeys going around, but overall the decks were, you know, pretty normal, but just his decision-making I thought was very impressive. So it's cool to kind of see this successful, recently successful tournament player go up against somebody that's been so dominant on the uh, rank ladder for a while. Well, see if that dominance extends to the poll results, see what the fans think about who's going to come through with the victory here. And no, it's looking actually what very you know? even between the two <laughs> Korean players. It is. It looks pretty dead even between these two guys right now. But honestly, I, I can't blame the fans because uh, right now a lot of people out there maybe haven't seen them quite as much and not as familiar with these players. And they both won their matches yesterday. So going into this one, I mean, I even think it's a little bit hard to predict who's going to come out on top. I, I don't even want to try to predict. I think it's going to be a really even match either way. Yeah, this a lot of variables for both. You're know, going to have the tournament experience for Handsome Guy, the recent success for Dainé. But we want to show you guys a quick preview of this matchup between Handsome Guy and Dainé. And we're looking at the decks right now on the screen. So the bans have yeah. come through both players banning Warrior. And if I remember right, don't quote me on this, but if I remember right, uh, both of them had their Warriors banned away yesterday too. I think maybe uh, Handsome Guy actually got his through 
But uh, otherwise, we've got the same classes, Druid, Mage, and Warlock for both of these guys. So the Warlock was the one that Handsome Guy wasn't able to play in his first three. So we're going to see our first shot of Handsome Guy's Warlock. Dione hadn't played Warrior, has the Warrior banned again. Mm -hmm. so we're going to have to wait to see what type of warrior that is. Yeah, and uh, with Dionese decks too, I mean, they they were pretty normal, pretty meta, but we did see some kind of Dione flair in there, right? I mean, we saw the Raven Idol in Druid, so these, he might have a couple tricks up his sleeve because we've seen most of the cards in these decks, but we haven't really seen everything yet. And the decks that we have seen that are common between the two have been the same archetypes. So there is actually mm -hmm. a reality where these players have decided to bring four, uh, they've bought the same four classes. They may have even bring, brought the same four archetypes. We're going to have to wait for confirmation of that. And so it's going to probably be some mirror matches. We saw some Melhawk Paladin mirror matches yesterday that no, boggled the mind. spare me. But theoretically, it's going to mean that the best player on the day will shine through. Yeah, I think so, too. And, and uh, this is a really, really interesting matchup because they are playing such similar decks. And that almost makes me maybe want to give the edge a little bit to Handsome Guy because he's arguably the player that's a little bit more familiar with these you know, matchups. I mean, with the way that Diony likes to play a lot of the time, you get the surprise factor, right? You can, you can get wins because you can do things your opponents aren't expecting because of your card choices. But in this match, when you're kind of running the same cards, then it's down to kind of pure decision-making, right? Then it's down to kind of having experience in that matchup. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, Diony can kind of keep up with a player like handsome guy. Looks like we'll find out very shortly. It seems like we're finally ready to begin our first match of the day. It's going to be Dione versus handsome guy. An all Korean match. One of these guys is going to be entrenched in the top four and the other one is going to have to fight their way if they are to be the APAC winter champion. That's right. In Hearthstone Heroes of Warcraft. I love the zoom in on the uh, table at the end. And there's the mulligans. Okay. So Dione he looked a little bit upset, but you know, as far as uh, Zoo goes, I don't think that's the worst hand to start off with. And Could Dione, be a lot worse. Oh, but it's a mirror though, maybe. We knew that Dione was running the Zoo Warlock. We saw it yesterday. Handsome guy, we hadn't seen the Warlock, but it is going to be the Zoo Mirror, the first of potentially yeah. multiple mirrors in this series. And we're looking at the Mulligans. Mulligany and Doomguard at the start, certainly not ideal. Yeah, it doesn't really help you uh, a whole lot. Uh, the interesting thing is we see Handsome Guy's Mulligan come in is uh, with mirror matches, they can tend to snowball a little bit, right? And I think Zoo is one of the primary examples where whoever kind of gets the early momentum going, it's pretty tough for the other player to stop that. So we'll see who can grab it in the first couple turns. Worth knowing some of the tech decisions, because of course these Zulis are unlikely to be card for card the same. Gormok yeah. the Impaler in the starting hand from Handsome Guy. What's your take on Gormok? Because this is a card that has been sinned uh, kind of sparingly in the zoo lists. You know, I, I I know it works. I don't think it's a, it's certainly not a bad card to put in Zoo. I'm personally not a huge, huge fan of it, but I mean, it's certainly seen a lot of success. You can't really disparage it too much, but Handsome Guy has it in his. So what do you throw out against this knife juggler? He doesn't really have a lot of great options. He can play the wolf and just trade with it, I suppose. He'd have his 2-2 out on the board. But that's kind of a, an iffy situation to be in. I think it's still the best to just get rid of that knife juggler, though. Yeah, knife juggler yeah. effectively has taunt, right? It's a must-remove minion. It snowballs so hard. There was two More different options, but using the mana makes sense. And if there's anything I've learned about Dark Pedro in these zoo matches, it's all about power overwhelming. So it seems pretty handedly the best choice of the three. I think generally that's what you go with uh, Blood Imp. If it was like uh, 2013, maybe Blood sure. Imp would be a choice back then. Maybe that was in people's decks back then. But uh, Reliquary Seeker, you know what's really tough is when you play a Dark Peddler when you've got like three minions on the board and you have the option to take Reliquary Seeker and you're like, oh, maybe, maybe I could make this work. And like, no, no, don't be silly, man. You're never going to have that many minions out. Just take the power overwhelming. I don't know. If you're sitting on the three minions and brand bronze bit in your hand, you think of the 9-9 nine, nine Reliquary yeah. Seeker dream that you happens once every ranked game or so. You cannot be seduced by the possibility of large minions, though. I think he's going to go with the power overwhelming in the end. It's just the most uh, kind of versatile card out of those three. He's taking a long time to choose him, and he actually goes with the Blood Imp. And this kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier, where you want to get that early momentum, and you want to be able to build that board that your opponent has trouble removing in this uh, zoo mirror. So I guess that's kind of the uh, lines that Dione is thinking along. It's one thing worth noting that a lot of these zoo lists have kind of cycled out the Doom Guards for things like Leroy Jenkins, and that's where the power overwhelming really comes into yeah. kind of full fruition. You're able to go burst for 14, 18 damage, depending on how many copies of power over overwhelming that you pick up from the Dark Peddlers. But because it's a more traditional Doomguard list, maybe the value of power overwhelming 
is a bit lower. We're watching sure. this turn three play where has developed both minions, but is kind of stuck between the option of trading with the Dark Peddler and just going face with the Dire Wolf Alpha. I mean, Handsome Guy has the edge right now. You know, he's he's got the board. He's got the three to one minions. Could just go to face. I mean, obviously, <laughs> most likely that Dark Peddler is going to end up running into the Dire Wolf Alpha, so you don't really even need to worry too much about the unfavorable trade with the Flame Imp. So. I feel like you might as well just go face. You've got the edge. They're going into turn three. They don't have the coin. There's not a whole lot they can do to take the board back in a big way in the situation. He's going to go for the trade, though. And Handsome Guy, I mean, that's the that's what he does, right? He generally does go for the safe way out. But he was thinking about it. And if he was to know what we knew, the quality of the hand from Diony is desperately poor. Remember, yeah. in a zoom mirror, what are your swing cards? The only real swing cards are Argus if you have a board developed and, of course, the implosion. And he has access to neither at three mana. His only real playable minions are Voidwalker and Blood Imp, so Diony really struggling for cards at the opening. I mean, and that's kind of the the tricky part with playing this zoom mirror, right? Is you don't know what's in your opponent's hand. You don't know if they're uh, doing very well. And I think I feel like now handsome guy should know oh, that Diony's hand is not that great. Oh man, just the Blood Imp. That is a rough, rough start now for Diony. But going to, back to what I was saying. It, you get in trouble if you play too quickly against a good hand, and you get in trouble if you play too slowly against a bad hand, too. So it's tough to kind of make that choice once in a while, but Handsome Guy, he can kind of just cruise at this point. Just life tapping, throwing down the Haunted Creeper, just a little bit more damage to face. Just looking for something from Diony to really start developing a board. The interesting thing for Handsome Guy is that when he sees that basically Diony passes his turn, because tap into Blood Imp doesn't actually add any board presence whatsoever, Ugh. you think, there must be an implosion, because what are the cards in the hand that means that a zoo can't play something on turn three with access to four minions? But sure. not even to know that those options weren't there, so has to use a power overwhelming just to trade with a blood, a, a flame imp of all yeah. things. And now he develops a board, but it's certainly wow. nothing massive. Uh, pretty nice draw for Handsome Guy to uh, pick up that Defender of Argus. Waiting to see if he wants to maybe uh, use the Abusive to run the Spider into the Voidwalker. He's just going to go for the Defender right away, though. Just take care of it with the Dark Peddler. Just build that board even more. And why not? He's got that edge. Yeah, just throwing down another minion. I mean, this is Handsome Guy setting up his win right here. Well, it's one of the unique matchups where overextending onto the board, there's no way for Diony to punish such overextension. Zoo doesn't run Hellfire. There's an outside chance, of course, of one tech Hellfire, but very, very unlikely. It's been a while since people have been teching Hellfire into Zoo pretty regularly, but uh, you gotta wonder when you see situations like this, you're always, if you're Diony right now, you're always thinking, maybe I should have teched in that Hellfire after all. And it's also one of those situations where, of course, the ladder decks, you know, they're gonna be very tight. They're about consistency over large amounts of sample size. You won't run Hellfire in that situation, but just like when we see Amnesiac back at the America's Winter Championships, teching in Big Game Hunter into Oil Rogue, there's mm -hmm. always interesting tech decisions based on the field you expect to be facing yeah. I like the championship. Orders. I like the Lothev. I mean, more than anything, it's just getting a big body on the board. It's getting a minion out that's going to take more than one of Handsome Guy's uh, minions to trade with, ideally. Unfortunately, Gormok the Impaler shows up, and uh, that doesn't work out for Diony. But I think he made the right choice. Lothev was the way to go there. Gormok's one of those situational cards that Izu may never find playable. If the Gormok was in the hand of Dayoni, who's never been able to develop a board, it would have likely been a dead card for the majority of the match, but gets a lot of value out of it here, handsome guy. And we're talking yeah. about a pretty unassailable uh, lead when it comes to Dayoni trying well, to find a way back into the game. Handsome guy has Dayoni just dead to rights. Yep. Right now, he's got the Doom Guard, and that's going to be enough damage to finish this one off. And handsome guy, just kind of like we talked about, took that lead early on in uh, the zoo, and. Zoom here, and he's going to take game one. There's some, definitely some swinging mirror matches. We saw plenty right. of turns of Murloc Paladin yesterday where anything could happen by the end. No pun no. intended. Really? But really, no pun intended? No pun intended. There's a little bit of pun anything. intended there. Okay, well, right, it I resulted out of it. Thanks, don't lie Doha, to me, Papa Smithy. This particular matchup, there's just no comeback mechanic when you're so far behind on board. Uh -huh. No implosion even to maybe get something going on turn four, and the result is a very one-sided victory to Hanson Guy. That's right. So handsome guy now with the uh, mage and the druid to choose from. He's got to get wins with both of those, obviously, in the conquest format. Diony, same classes to pick from, and uh, we'll see what he brings in for game two. Uh, the freeze mage, obviously the archetype there for handsome guy, which would do very well against the zoo in almost every situation. So mm -hmm. interesting to see which decks they go to. But for now, let's get a bit more information about the expert pianist and Hearthstone player, handsome guy.
혼자 있을 때는 그냥 가끔 피아노 치는 것 정도가 취미 생활로 하고 있어요. 피아노보다 하스스톤이 훨씬 어려운 것 같아요. 그래서 하스스톤 쪽이 훨씬 좋습니다. 처음에는 제가 직업을 갖기 위한 시험을 준비 중이었는데 그 시험에 대한 스트레스가 심하다 보니까 친구가 하스스톤을 소개시켜줘가지고 그래서 원래 처음부터는 전혀 프로 될 생각이 없었고 취미로만 하고 있었는데 프로 게이머로서의 생활은 랭크로서에 의한 포인트와 대회로서에 의한 포인트를 얻기 위해서 대회를 참가한다거나 네, 랭크를 올린다거나 하는 등의 일을 평소에 하고 있고요. 네 번째 연기. 매일 같이 꾸준히 방송을 하는 시간이 있고, 오! 그 외에는 이제 제가 좀 자유롭게 하고 싶은 걸할수 있는 직업인 것 같아요. 저 스스로가 강하다고 생각하는 이유는 이제 꾸준하게 많이 할수 있는 연습량, 그 꾸준함이 저의 실력의 원동력이 된것 같고요. 응원해 주신 분들. 이 생각보다 많이 돼서 되게 감사하고 네, 저는 그분들의 응원에 어, 기대에 부응할 수 있도록 완벽한 플레이를 할 생각입니다. 음, 사실 저는 이제 엄밀히 말하자면 한국 대표가 아니고 아시아에서 가장 높은 포인트의 선수로 왔기 때문에 어, 어떻게 보면 아시아 대표라고 할수 있고 네, 그래서 저는 제가 아시아에서 가장 잘하는 선수 중에 한 명으로 뽑힌 것에 대해서 좀 스스로 자랑스럽고 블리즈컨 시드까지 받아서 제 스스로가 이제 세계에서도 가장 잘하는 선수 중에 한 명이 될수 있을지 I'm handsome guy and I will not lose anybody Bold words from handsome guy. This is a guy who's still on the road to redemption, Doa. This is a guy who is here because of his ladder performance. That's never been in doubt, but the big thing for him has been those mistakes in tournaments. The tournament play so far He's kind of let himself down multiple times. So even though he's consistent on the ladder, it would be a big redemption story for him if he was able to win here at the Hearthstone APAC Winter Championships. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've been following Handsome Guy for a while now. We've cast him in multiple seasons in Korea, and he's always looked solid, but right. He always kind of had that issue where he was sort of cracking under pressure. But this event, he has looked really, really good. I haven't seen any of that yet. And I know we're only you know a little bit into the second match, but so far, so good for Handsome Guy. Up with the ones are lead. But guys, we want to make sure that you are really enjoying yourselves here, you know, getting involved on Twitter. Use that hashtag, H. CT. I know that we've already talked about who you think going to win, but if you're just chatting, you know, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on Twitter, hashtag HCT, and let us know how you're enjoying the event. That's right. Let us know about how snazzy you think Papa Smithy's tie is. It is quite snazzy right now. And whether those piano skills from Handsome Guy really resonate with you. It was a nice little tune at the start of that. I wasn't actually aware of that. We talked to Handsome Guy. His English is actually pretty good, especially it for is. the Korean players. You know, you're never sure exactly their knowledge of the English, but his English is good, and He's confident now, 1-0 up, a very crushing victory as well. He's primed to potentially set up for match point if he's able to go up 2-0. Yeah, and I wonder what he's going to go with. Uh, Major Druid, I think we're about to find out though. Now we're ready to get into game two, see if Handsome Guy can pile on, get to that 2-0, force a reverse sweep if Dio needs to go through to the top four. If Dio can find his footing, the popular streamer trying to show that there's a serious side to himself as well. Famous for those off the meta deck choices, the priest not reflected today. We're gonna see our second game. Oh Dionys running the druid. <laughs> Mirror matches continue, Doa. Druid versus druid for uh, game number two. And uh, while these decks again are gonna be pretty similar, we know that Dionys at least is a little bit different. He was running that Raven Idol yesterday that gave him a Starfire that gave him a win in one of his games. So he's got a couple tricks up his sleeve. There's that Raven Idol, but he's going to start things off with the Living Roots. And you might as well. You might as well get in there for a little bit of early damage. Some guy had the option to innovate at the Shade, turn one. But it's looking like as a Drake is potentially going to be a turn okay. two play. So Mark of Nature, Savagery, and Soul of the Forest. Interesting. You know, actually, Soul of the Forest doesn't seem that bad, but the Mark of Nature can uh, be really useful too in just like buffing up a minion, you're buffing up a Druid of the Claw if you want like a super tank that's hard to get through. And he is going to go with the Mark of Nature. It's got a little bit more versatility to it than the other uh, two cards in the choice. And Soul of the Forest would be good if you were able to stick a big board and that's then the get idea, the massive yeah. value from the Death Rattle, but difficult to do 
this particular match. So goes for the safer choice. It was looking like the Innovate coin as a Drake turn two, but Wild Growth changes those plans. Handsome Guy, with all this ramp, has some really flexible turns coming forward. Yeah, I mean, he's got a couple five drops. He's got that shade of Nax Ramus that he can fit in somewhere. But look at this. Tiny getting aggressive, man. That is awesome. I don't think Handsome Guy was expecting taking a five damage from that uh, sapling there. All that 5-1 sapling and mini upgroup coming through. It's not quite the Ancient of War in uh, uproot form, but a 5-1. It's looking <laughs> right. very formidable, but certainly the swipe might be the appetizing choice. Yeah, he's just going to go ahead and uh, use his hero power to clear that 5-1, though. I mean, he's going to be gaining a little bit of armor throughout the game, so it looks like he feels okay with taking another 4 damage, but that's going to bring him below 20 already. Down to 18 health, and Dianne just going to drop that pile to Shredder in response, and it uh, looks like he's got the edge in this game. We'll see what uh, Handsome Guy has to try to turn this one around. And Dianne, honestly, in future turns, he's going to get closer and closer to Savage Roll Lethal, not even Force of Nature Savage Roll, the 14 damage combo, given that Handsome Guy's already down to 17 health. So yeah. Savage Roll would certainly be a massive draw if Dianne was to find one. Handsome Guy has access to seven mana this turn. It's interesting, the previous turn, he could have played Shade, Coin innovated out swipe, but True. decided to face tank the damage, even given the mirror and just how swingy this can be. I mean, the situation is that you, you can't really burn one of those swipes on one of the saplings, even if it is a 5-1 sapling, just because you're gonna need that later in the game for uh, other situations that we might see coming up. Oh, look at that. <laughs> okay. So the Wraith is going to uh, make the cards a little bit more expensive for both players. One mana cost increase on all minions. Yep, good old mana Wraith. Is he going to trade though? He's thinking about it. Nope, decides not to. So Handsome Guy playing a little bit greedier of a game here. It's also a situation where the mana Wraith effect does deny certain five drops that we expect to see coming through. Yeah. So the Druid of the Claw wasn't playable this turn. Swipe has to be used on just a single minion. Look at this, though. Handsome Guy is already down to 13 health. He draws into his second swipe, but he's got to do something about the board here. He's so steadfast in holding on to the first swipe. But at the cost of his life total, clearly. Interesting. And uh, Handsome Guy actually has a 60% win rate in Druid versus Druid in ranked matches. That's actually a, a really cool stat to see because for a long time, the Druids you'll meet on ladder have, you know, similar decks to this. So. Certainly a good uh, win rate in the matchup. Very interesting to see Dianne actually commit to the Wrath because he has no other playable minions yeah. this turn if it was used to two mana. No four mana creatures on the list. Emperor Thorison obviously looking like a very tasty choice, but the quality of the hand isn't massive. No parts of the combo available to be cost reduced by the Emperor Thorison. It's not really a clear order of play. What do you like here for Dianne? I mean, it's tough because he doesn't have a four drop. Otherwise, you know, Wrath into like a pile of Shredder, if he would have had it, would have felt great, but... He's definitely looking for one. Yeah, we'll see if he can draw into it. Nope, just gets the Force of Nature, which is nice when your opponent is that low, but if you're dying, you're going to start to worry about some of the incoming damage, too. You're at 30 health, so maybe the argument for playing Big Game Hunter just as a minion yeah. isn't quite there. You're coming into turn seven, you're going to feel well, very sheepish if Dr. Boom comes on curve for Handsome Guy. I think it's still worth it to go for the big game hunter. It's it's unlikely that he's going to see the Dr. Boom, but he's going to save it for now. Just a little bit worried about that. Dr. Boom is the only seven attack creature or higher that Druids are expected to run. Some Druids tech in Ragnaros, but we're not expecting that. We haven't seen that this tournament. Not yet. Nope. Okay. So Handsome Guy making a little bit of progress again on the life total of Dianne. And he's certainly got a lot of spells in his hand, but not a lot of minions to shore up what he's got right now. But Dianne needs to get something going on the board here. The big issue for Dianne is that we know that Handsome Guy has double swipe in hand, both playable on the next turn. After face tanking that damage, he's been able to build a board. And so far, Dianne's not been able to really develop anything after such pushing so much damage in the first three or four turns. Yeah, he's, a, he's still in good shape, though. Throws down the Emperor Thoris, and that means that if he draws into the Savage Roar, he's going to have the combo next turn, and that would be, you know, the win, even if Handsome Guy does use his hero power. There's a Savage Roar for Handsome Guy, so he's got the combo, but he won't be able to cast it until next turn. He could theoretically set up the win, though. It's really coming down to the wire here. If he, if Handsome Guy just goes for face, does eight damage, brings Dianne down to 22, no, what, 18 that would be? Could win the next turn, but you run the risk of uh, losing to whatever Dianne has coming out. The handsome guy is relegated to not being able to push himself higher than 14 health. He's coming into yeah. turn 
eight, but of course, Dianese already played Thorazin, so there is the chance that he'll be able to play combo. How well, uh, Dianese, if Thorazin survives, would have enough to kill off Handsome Guy next turn because he'd have Thorazin plus Living Roots plus the Force of Nature plus his hero power. And while that's true, you're not going to leave up the Thorazin. I think that the chances of leaving up a five attack do. against... When you're, when you're sitting on 13 health, there's so many different ways you can find lethal. Savage Raw yeah. and a combination of other things would be lethal. That probably is too much. Handsome guy is really waiting. The rope is burning. Looking for a way to clear. Okay. Yeah, I think this is definitely the safest way to go. So threaten lethal with the big game hunter. So, it's on Diony. Can he find lethal? We know that He's in combo. hand, he has access to nine damage. And does he get it? No. Okay. Doesn't get the Savage Roar. How can he stay alive? I mean, he's got that Druid of the Claw for Taunt, but he may, may just have to, I don't know, even if he draws a swipe. Well, if he draws a swipe, he'll be able to clear everything except for the Pile of Shredder. Knows he's in a situation of 16 health oh. where, well, any minions stay up and you're in a really bad spot. Druid of the Claw Taunt hmm. form might be his best way to survive. Yeah, we'll see. But even if that came through, what would the damage be? It'd certainly be enough. It'd definitely be Lethal Dog. Yeah, any one of those minions could clear that Druid of the Claw. 14 just from the combo, and then the minions on the board all mm. representing 6 damage would clearly be Lethal. So right. feels like Dianne is going to find himself in a very quick 2-0 hole. I mean, no he could charge that Druid of the Claw into the 4-4 and then use the Living Roots on the uh, big game hunter. Or the Pilot Shredder, I suppose. But BGH at least would remove a minion for sure, and he will remove that. Get a long, lovely look at the Living Roots. That's right. Homework for you guys to <laughs> memorize this card. We'll have a test later on. All but right. uh, well, there's double that's combo. About it. Yep. <laughs> Handsome guy has the combo, and he's uh, going to go up 2 0 in this series over Tyane. Things are uh, not off to a great start for the popular streamer from Korea. What looked like a really fast start for Dione. Handsome Guy used his resources to, okay, fall low in life total, but finally build a board. Because he wild growth, he was the one to higher mana. It was very unlikely for him to die to combo on turn eight. And then turn nine rolled around. The very familiar Druid Force of Nature Savage Raw, Savage Raw combo came through. Yeah. And suddenly, a 2 0 lead. And we didn't really see this coming, though. It's a surprise. Two mirror matches, but so far, all advantage to Handsome Guy. Yeah, I mean, I like the start from Dione, but he just kind of didn't have minions. And that's not good if you're playing uh, Druid versus Druid. Hurts a little bit. And we might even see a potential third mirror match, such as been this particular series. But guys, we got a chance to interview the very popular Korean streamer, Dione. Take a closer look. Hearthstone, <laughs> 약간 놀리는 식으로 애들이 따윤이 따윤이 이런 식으로 하는 놀림감이 됐었는데 흔히들 말하는 이제 어 한국에서 말하는 돌 게임 페인이라는 뜻이 있는데 예 그게 굉장히 또 저에 와닿는 것 같아요. 어 뭐야 이거? 아 카페. 하트스톤을 좋아하게끔 사람들이 재밌어 하는 것들을 많이 보여드리고 싶어요. 하트스톤의 재미를. 사람들이 보면서 웃을 수 있는 그런 방송을 많이 만들고 싶고 최종 목표는 사람들한테 이제 알려져 있는 영어 좀 하트스톤 했으면 따윤이다 이런 고유 명사가 좀 되고 싶습니다. ボーイ、ボーイ、ボーイ、ボーイ、ボーイ。ボーイ、ボーイ、ボーイ、ボーイ、ボーイ、ボーイ、ボーイ、ボーイ、ボーイ、ボーイ、ボーイ、ボーイ
So, Doe, we talked about the redemption story for Handsome Guy. You can see that there's an element of redemption for Diony as well. He's kind of been sure. pigeonholed as this entertaining streamer there to make everyone happy. But this is a chance. This is a platform for him to show that he's this serious competitive player as well. He's brought the standard decks, but so far in mirror matches with very standard decks, Zoo Warlock and then Combo Druid, he's been outmatched by Handsome Guy. That's right. He's not just going to settle for world famous either. He wants to be universe famous. He wants space to know Diony. It's pretty impressive. And it's no exaggeration. Do you know Diony is a massive meme in Korea? Yeah, he's, that is true. He's a very popular meme. He's a very popular streamer. We liken him to Crip, who, of course, is the most prominent English language streamer. And Diony always up there in terms of numbers on the Twitch streams, but That's right. really down so, there in terms of momentum in this series. So only Mage left for Handsome Guy to get a win with Diony. Obviously, can choose between his Warlock Druid or Mage. He can pick into the mirror matchup if he wants to. I don't think he does, though. I mean, Druid would be the best matchup against Freeze Mage of the options, but Probably. are we going to see a third mirror, though? That would be an amazing series. We load in, nope. and Diony is going for the comfort matchup. If you're not going to get the win with Druid, you're not going to get the win with any of his three eligible decks. Yeah, I think it'd be uh, pretty risky to pick Mage into Mage to give us that third mirror matchup, so glad he's going with the Druid and Handsome Guy. Just one Freeze Mage win away from uh, coming out really good out of his group. Handsome Guy has access to two playable minions if he's to use the coin. Imagine they're going to hold on to the Doomsayer for a bit more value, but very difficult to find Doomsayer value against the Freeze Mage, just given the fact that the deck naturally will always have double keep with the Grove. So two silences standard in the list for years now for Druid. Sure, yeah. Diony gets a really nice spot, or start rather, actually getting that piloted Shredder out quickly. That Scientist just dropped by Handsome Guy, and he does have that five mana option to go Frost Nova Doomsayer a little bit later. But we know Diony has a Keeper of the Grove, so he's going to be in pretty good shape. Just going to trade, draw that card, pop the Ice Barrier, and that's about it. It's interesting to see. Yesterday, talking to D2, he's talking about the use of Doomsayer in this particular matchup and saying that holding on to turn five for the Frost Nova Doomsayer combo is just so much less reliable against Druid, just because, again, they've run two copies of the four mana Keeper of the Grove that has access oh, yeah. to the Silence. So maybe just throwing it out on turn two, hoping there's no Innovate or other cheating of the mana curve available for Druid might just be the more sticky play because we know the turn five removal certainly won't register because of that Silence in the hand of Diony. Yeah, it's not too bad of an idea. Diony just getting a little bit more damage in, breaking through that ice barrier. So Handsome Guy has got that option to coin out that Doomsayer, but now the board doesn't really seem like it's as worth it. So what do you do here? Do you maybe play that other secret? He's got the option to drop the uh, Acolyte of Pain as well, although he wouldn't be able to ping it. The unique not thing about coin. the Druid matchup is that whenever there's minions huh. sticking for Diony, you want to cycle. That's the reality of Freeze Mage. You're always looking to cycle, but you just don't find t turns for cards like the Arcane Intellect that he has in hand. Frostbolting the uh, Pilot of Treader seems like the most likely line of play, but even that, you know, there could potentially be very similar to the four attack popping out from the two mana creatures. So there's not really a very obvious four mana play. Where, where do you kind of lean to? Because I guess Ice Barrier would at least guarantee an extra eight health and another turn uh. to potentially find something. I mean, you could go Frost Nova Doomsayer here, too, to just prevent the plays. He's going to go ahead and Frost Bolt the Pile of the Shredder, though. Yeah. Oh, well, wow, that's convenient. <laughs> All right, well, he gets rid of the 1-1 one, one anyway. And he might just decide to cycle this Blood Mage Thalnos. He's thinking about it. All right. Poor Blood Mage Thalnos. He's a legendary minion, but he just gets thrown into the Doomsayer. That's not a lot of respect, is it? Since so much Doomsayer this week because of all the Murloc Paladin and Freeze Mage. Oh, yeah. In this particular case, because it popped out the Shredder and there was only a 1-1, one, one, doesn't actually get a lot of value. It doesn't actually give tempo control over to Handsome Guy. It doesn't get initiative just because Diony now has access to an open board, a five-mana turn, and he has kind of a just an embarrassment of riches. Is it going to be the Azure Drake or the Ancient of Law? Both of them are going to present a body. Both of them are going to cycle and get him further into his deck, and he goes for Ancient of Law. Yeah, I think it's a smooth play. Gonna get a couple more options for next turn, and that's a nice next turn already. Azure Drake into Ra uh, Raven Idol. Maybe Raven Idol first, actually. We'll see. So there's the Alex Strasser for Handsome Guy now. Has a 5-5 to worry about. Probably doesn't want to use his whole turn removing. Does have access to a Fireball, but at 5 mana, nothing to combo yeah. that with, barring maybe a coin into Doomsayer, which doesn't seem like the ideal play. 
It's almost seeming like a coin is going to get saved for Alex Straza at this point. He's been holding on to it for so long. I think, I think it's tough. Maybe you just go for the Acolyte of Pain, ping it. Maybe you just go for the Arcane Intellect. I think you can still cycle a little bit comfortably here. Starts with Not the Arcane Intellect. All right, there we go. So there's one of his ice blocks. Can coin that out if he wants to. Yes. Ten cards in hand, so he's going to have to play something. Time's running out on him. Could just play that Doomsayer, too, just to use it as seven armor, quote-unquote, if his opponent doesn't have any uh, silence. He's going to try it. But Dianne's not going to have to worry about that too much. And Handsome Guy knows that coming into turn seven after Ancient of Law is drawn, very unlikely for there not to be a silence available for Dianne. Six mana turn means you can fit in the hero power if you choose to, or the Raven Idol mm -hmm. with that silence. He's thinking if he wants to play that Raven Idol or not. I mean, it does make your turn slightly awkward because you are kind of obligated to play that Keeper of the Grove. So you're going to have like one mana left over. So he's thinking maybe it might not be so bad to keep her and then just hero power. One armor is never going to hurt you against Freeze Mage, that's for sure. Going to go for the Raven Idol anyway. Just too curious. All right, Murloc War Leader. We might see that later today, but won't be picked this time around. Priestess of Loon is an interesting choice, but I think uh, Druid of the Saber, just to get that little bit of extra damage in, might be the way to go. I'm a bit surprised that he decided to go for the Raven Isle this turn. This is a matchup where if you can fit in the hero power, you're giving yourself more armor, which potentially might be ah, okay. resistance against lethal, but it does take the Priest of Loon for a bit more healing. I mean, honestly, that's that's not a bad choice at all. Uh, if you have that situation where you know Alex Strauss is probably going to be coming in at some point, Priest of Loon heals you back up, gets a decent body on the board. So yeah, not a bad choice. So in terms of removal, only Blizzard in the hand when it comes to AoE removal, and obviously both minions would survive that two damage AoE. The coin we talked about being used for Alex Straza is suddenly looking like we get a lot of value with Archmage Antonidas. It's just, can he Maybe. find the space to play a card like Antonidas when the threat of dying becomes just greater and greater as we come into seven, eight, nine mana turns for the Druid? Well, yeah, I mean, if you think about it next turn, I mean, he could what coin into Ice Lance, which wouldn't really do, do a whole lot other than give him two Fireballs that he might not really even be able to use anyway. So we'll see. Loading up on Secrets doesn't seem like a bad idea. Playing them while he has access to them, but it's going to be as a Drake slammed down from the side of Dione. There's the first Savage Raw. Ooh, he's running two Raven Idol. Wow, okay, we didn't cool. know that. We only saw the first before. Yeah. All right, going to pop the Ice Barrier, but... That's neat. That's definitely a Dione flair there. And I mean, Raven Idol was a card that was experimented a lot with early on because it, it can be very strong, but we did see it drop off a bit. Again, you know, you, you think about consistency and it does have the uh, the issue where it lacks that a little bit from time to time. He's going to hold on to it for now, though, just using that hero power. And you have to wonder what cards are cut to fit in two Raven Idols, maybe a single shade. A single Maybe shade. Well, we haven't seen Shade of Naxxramas, I guess, from the deck of Dione. Big yeah. Game Hunter might have cycled out of the list as well. No, we've seen that already, so it can't be the Big Game Hunter. Yeah. One copy of Living Roots, perhaps, as a, another one mana spell. Maybe. I feel like it was. I feel like we haven't seen Shade out of his deck, what so. To do? Might be it. Do? Probably it. Blizzard seems like the way to go here for Handsome Guy. I mean, you're at the point in Freeze Mage where you might not be able to kill these minions, but at least you can keep them from killing you for the most part. Handsome Raven guy. Idol's gonna get played. It's worth knowing that Handsome Guy on turn nine, okay, Alex Straza might be one line, but Archmage Antonidas into Coin Frost Nova will be available as a AoE. Whoa, Clockwork Giant. Whoa, that is okay. a huge draw for uh, Dianne out of that. And that is exactly the card you want to get against Freeze Mage. All right, so that might soak up a little bit of damage from Handsome Guy. That's insane to see. We actually were joking about Clockwork no Giant kidding. in uh, the rehearsals, talking about playing around that card. Uh -oh. We actually see one. All right, well, I mean, Handsome Guy is going to feel pretty compelled to go for Frost Nova Doomsayer here and just hope that Dione doesn't have that second Keeper of the Grove. We know he does, but from Handsome Guy's perspective, when you see that 8-8 hit the board, you know you've got a, a fairly decent chance, honestly, of losing your Ice Block the very next turn. So might be now or never with that Doomsayer. I think Frost Nova is a must play this turn. You know, it would have been nice to find space to play something that develops threats, but not yeah. a reality that Handsome Guy lives in. Space knows Dianne, though, so you got to be careful about going to space now. Mm. That's true. You're Handsome Guy. <laughs> handsome Guy doesn't in have space, any worries no one can in the world. hear you scream, but you can hear it whisper, Dianne, I know that guy. 
echoes around space. That's right. Wait, that's not how acoustics work. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, so what's it going to be? Seems like Frost Nova, Nova is 100% required. Still yeah. could potentially play it. Yep. Uh, it's to dig further. There's potentially some more direct damage. And there's the Frost Nova. Yeah, Frost Nova, but no Doomsayer. Deciding that Diony probably does have that silence, which uh, he does. There's the Force of Nature, so Diony could combo this turn. He's got so much stuff on the board, too. It's It honestly feels a little bit tempting to do that just because it takes away a lot of handsome guy's health. It gets him uh, much, much lower to uh, pop that ice block next turn. And with a lot of, uh, with a couple two health minions too, Diony might be kind of expecting that some of those might die next turn. So maybe you do just combo right now. The one thing about comboing is you do 12 damage to face and then you could just kill the Acolyte of Pain and that ensure too. there isn't a third draw. So it's a good point. The fact that the two damage from face actually gets a lot of value, not just two damage to the opponent, actually might make it very attractive. And yeah, we are going to see yeah. the Force of Nature Savage Royal combo come through. He's got another Force of Nature as well, so he's got plenty of options to go farther in this game as far as uh, dealing more damage to the Ice Block. Debating on what to do with... The remaining six damage. Uh, I think I think four to the face and then uh, two onto the acolyte. But he may just go all to the face. You no. can see really oh, valuing okay. his armor yeah. total because even if Alex Straza was to be played, would be at effective 18 health with the three armor. Yeah, there there is that. That is true. It's not the sort of line of play we expect, but mm -hmm. given the reality of coming into a nine mana turn, that three extra health effectively might uh, be the difference when it comes to potential lethal. You think about yeah. aggressive Alexstrasza into the next turn, double fireball, frostbolt. What it's one of the few you? ways that Diony could you? lose and quite smart in playing around it. I mean, the other <laughs> factor too is you might want to set things up so that you can get them down to exactly one health after the ice block comes back. And there is the Alexstrasza that we talked about. So will we just see the Priestess of Elune here after this ice block is popped? I'm just looking for cards that Handsome Guy could draw into to potentially pick up the win. Remember, he does have double Ice Lance and Fireball in hand. Frostbolt would certainly be a big draw. There's a lot of direct damage, a lot of burn available to Handsome Guy. So he's doing his math to see if he Savage Roars. He can kill Alex Strasso with the uh, with one of his minions and also get Handsome Guy to uh, have that Ice Block popped at one. He's got the BGH, though, so he doesn't even need to attack into it. Make sure that he pops at the lowest value possible. Should be access to... Yeah. A one damage pop with Diane checking all his options. Yep. You just go uh, Clockwork Giant and then uh, what would be, what would it be? Clockwork Giant into yeah. the Ancient of Law and then any of your other minions would be one health. Yep. That would work. So there's Ice Block number one and Ice Block number two is not in Handsome Guy's hand. And Priests of Elune will actually allow him to push up to an even healthier life total as Handsome yeah. Guy smiles at the heel. This is what we talked about earlier. There's the Ice Block. Nice draw from Handsome and Guy. Now so he has access to two alive. turns and a lot of direct damage, even at 22 health. Diony might not be safe. Is it enough, though? Because he doesn't have a Frostbolt to start off the damage from the Ice Lance. That's the, the tricky part. He's got the Fireball. He's got the Forgotten Torch. Well, it's time to start loading up on damage, and maybe he'll have to find... He's got to be close to the Frostbolt in, the, in his deck. He can't have too many cards left. He needs to find a Frostbolt. That is the key card that he's looking for. Yeah. Yeah, let's I think you just do this with the torch. Yep, so let's see what life total you can get him down to. With the torch, it will be 13 health. Mm -hmm. There's no healing left for Diony, but Hero Power and potentially an Ancient of Law would be a big draw to potentially push him up even further. He could go a Leper Gnome, too, just to have that out there to give himself another chance to draw into the Frostbolt. The question is, one further card towards a Frostbolt or potentially drawing into a Roaring Torch. What is the bigger draw? Yeah. And some guys trying to calculate it. I kind of like the Leper Gnome, honestly. Um, just because you're going to be able to... Oh, you might go for the Accolade of Pain. Either way, this is, you know, meant to draw into that Frostbolt to try to just do a little bit more damage. You see Diony Grimace at the sign of Jorba. Ancient of oh, Law is a really <laughs> big card. That is a great draw for Diony. He's going to be able to get back up to 21. So what does that mean? A yeah, handsome guy. Not too happy seeing that. And I believe that does push him out of lethal range for the... The mage. Short of a blood mage Thalnos and just having literally every direct damage. Yeah. I don't believe there's any way to put out 22 damage. Mad Scientist definitely doesn't change anything. Nope. 
that should about do it. Even if he kills all the minions, I guess he'd have to kill all the minions and freeze Daini and hope that Daini didn't have any direct damage in his hand, which is not very likely, even from Handsome Guy's perspective. And even for Handsome Guy, if you use the Blizzard, there's going to be empty spaces on the board. You can't keep him at seven cards. A Keeper of the Grove will be lethal. Yep. We know that Swipe and Savage Roar will be lethal as well. He's going to go for Ice Lance. Probably going to have to Ice Lance the face. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but you can't let your opponent do anything, but we know it's over, so... The emergency measures will not be enough. Yep. That's right, Mad Scientist just decides to come hang out for the end of the game. And Dianee has a couple different ways to end this. Goes for the swipe, and so he will stay alive in this series. Might be a bit of a comeback. It may be a comeback, Doa, but this was the matchup that he expected to win. Druid was the most favored of his decks. You know, Zoo Warlock and... The Freeze Mage Mirror will certainly be interesting results, but this was the almost guaranteed win. It got very close, and there was certainly potential draws where the handsome guy could have won the unfavored matchup and gone up 3-0, but we remain at 2-1. Still going to be a handsome guy in a lot of control. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if you think about the next two matchups, obviously you've got the Freeze Mage Mirror, which can, which can get really tricky, of course. And then you've got Zoo versus Freeze Mage, which can work. You can overwhelm the Freeze Mage early on once in a while. But if you get into that similar situation that we saw him in with the Druid last game, you kind of lack that direct damage, aside from a couple charge minions, that you need to kind of finish off the game in that state. And even though Handsome Guy has been a commanding lead. Dione is still very narrowly the favorite going into game four. Still have to like the position that Handsome Guy is in, specifically the fact that Dione mm -hmm. will have to find a win with Zoo against the Freeze Mage, which is a very, very difficult proposition to fulfill. Yeah, Dione uh, getting a little bit higher up on the fan vote. He's actually favored right now, which uh, be, given his position in this series, I'm a little bit surprised about. But then again, he's a popular guy. You know, maybe the Korean fans getting out there on Twitter. Maybe you're getting out there on Twitter as well and voting for Dione. But uh, we'll see. He still needs to win two games in a row to do it. Hands, handsome guy uh, still at the edge at this point. But worth knowing this is an elimination match. We will yeah. see Dione back if he is to lose in one of the next games. This is just to guarantee your spot in the top four, which, of course, both players are desperate to do. And now we're going to get a little bit of an insight into the mindset of Dione. Do you go for the mirror, the Freeze Mage mirror, or do you just try to find a win with the Zoo Warlock? Will it be a confidence boosting win? Will it be trying to come back from adversity with the Zoo to try and steal away that victory to keep the series all equal? Well, at this point, it's all comfort for Dione, right? I mean, his decks have been revealed. There's no secrets to keep anymore. He decides that he wants to go for the Freeze Mage mirror. And so that's exactly what we're going to see. Mirrors have been the story of the Hearthstone APAC Winter Championships. That Murloc Paladin mirror yesterday between Sogi and Pimping Ho will live in infamy. And now we get oh, yeah. a mirror that's honestly a lot of the same kind of playstyle when you see a Freeze Mage mirror. This is the sort of match where when the hand sizes get full around turn five, turn six, after all the early cycling, Crazy plays like using a blizzard on an empty board just to get a card out of your hand might actually be the best strategy. Might happen. We do see little differences in uh, the decks between these two. Dione running the Novice Engineer while Handsome Guy is favoring the... Uh, I almost said Leopard Gnome, but no. Those <laughs> haven't been in Freeze Mage for a long time. No, he's favoring the Loot Hoarder instead. So Dione going for a little bit less power on the board, but the instant draw in Handsome Guy. Kind of going for the opposite, but like you said, Papa Smithy, just a lot of cycling early on, playing a couple secrets, making sure you get the draws going. I mean, a key card in this matchup are cards like Emperor Thorison, and honestly, Alex Straza is a really, really big draw. If you don't pick up Alex Straza, then you don't get yourself in lethal range as early. So looking for those players to pick that up as we go further. Of course, Dione had it in his starting hand. Yeah, and Dione running double Forgotten Torch, actually, too, which is kind of interesting. It's, it's these. The fact that the two copies of, of Forgotten Torch have kind of been cycling in again as this yeah. deck has been developed to beat kind of the, some of the tougher matchups, like, for example, the Reno Warlock, which at the start seemed like to be a direct counter to the Freeze Mage, but it's just a reality of not having to get your opponent to 15 health to find a finisher, being able to extend past towards the 20, 21 health value. Yeah, okay, so there's the Doomsayer for Handsome Guy, one Roaring Torch already drawn for Dianne. And so with that sort of style to his Freeze Mage deck, he's going to have a little bit more direct damage than his opponent will. You got to wonder if we're going to see the Alex Strasses for uh, offense or defense this game. I really like Handsome Guy playing the 
Doomsayer into the turn six from Diana. It denies Emperor Thorison sticking on the board, and that's something you True. really want to do. The first person to find value from Emperor will have a big advantage, so is now an Emperor turn available to Handsome Guy. They expect him to slam it down and picking up a lot of momentum, picking up the tempo, the Doomsayer play rewarded. You notice too that Dayuni didn't attack with his minions last turn, and that's because he doesn't want to activate that ice barrier. He knows that he's gonna have to win through spell damage. There's a roaring torch, just taking down Emperor Tharzan. Dayuni. Yeah, just making sure nothing comes out on turn seven. And realistically, the only minion that we expect to be attacking face with any likelihood is Alex Straza, which will negate the ice barrier anyway. Hmm. All right, so a couple frost bolts and an ice lance in the hand for handsome guy. So he's got a chance to start putting some damage on. I think we're going to see Emperor this turn. Yep, there he is. Gets the hero power off too. So it really comes down to what kind of damage these guys can do. And uh, Diane has that Pyroblast as well. Well, we see Flame Strike cycled out of the hand here with Flame Strike ping. He can use a card that gets basically no value hmm. in the mirror and get it out of the hand. Although there is an argument to using the lower mana removal like a fireball and being able to develop something like a loot hoarder. So this is actually not a clear turn, even mm. though there's multiple different ways to remove the Thorsten. Well, I mean, he could also just go for Alex Strasser too and try to set up a win. He's got enough damage that uh, if Diane doesn't heal, he should be able to finish him on next turn. And Handsome Guy doesn't know if that secret's the Ice Barrier or the Ice Block. And if it is just Ice Barrier, might be able to get it done. Mm. Certain degree of optimism, I think, in that line. I think it's safer to just oh, remove yeah. the Thorison and go into future turns. But you're right, it well, is I'm a an potential optimistic guy. I'm an optimistic guy. Optimistic. I don't know if the Freeze Mage mirror is the mirror for you then, Noah. <laughs> no, it's not. No. That's, that's definitely true. This is a calculated, math-intensive matchup where, again, the deck list to both players are almost going to be card for card the same. Okay, there's room for maybe one or two copies of the Forgotten Torch and some other cycle we already noted, Loot Hoarder versus the Novice Engineer. But otherwise, very, very similar. Over to Diony, nine mana turn. Again, Alex Straza is playable. I wonder. Yeah, I know it may have seemed optimistic last turn, but I like Alex Straza this turn for Diony. I say just go for it, man. Doesn't feel like the most value, only gonna be effectively doing six health to your opponent, but. True. He doesn't really have the damage to kill in the next turn anyway, so... But what's the alternative line of play? Is it Acolyte of Pain into Ping, maybe developing the Ice Barrier? Maybe. Looks like that might be what we're looking at. No crazy tech choices for these Freeze Mage. No Kezen Mystic to ruin the day of the opponent in the mirror. We saw some very interesting tech choices from Matson yesterday, who was playing a deck that functions very similar to Freeze Mage in the Murloc Paladin, but was running Lotheb in that list. You were All hoping right. for Alex Straza. You were calling for it. It's Dragon Time. Yep, that's right. He's kind of just hoping for the best, counting on drawing into some damage to win the game next turn. And there's the Alex Straza for Dayuni. Or on to Dayuni. <laughs> he sees it targeting. He's like, okay, it's an Alex Straza off. Now, the big thing from the perspective of Handsome Guy is that there's only one secret from the opponent. He's expecting it to be Ice Block, so he's not actually that concerned with the initiative advantage that Diony has. Remember, Handsome Guy clearly Ooh. has the Ice Barrier developed. He got the Frost Bolt, so he can actually, I believe, pop that Ice Barrier this time. No. Let's, let's start doing some quick math. The no. Frost Bolt Ice Lance is just the seven damage, and then can't yep. fit in it. He's literally only got that for direct damage, so. Yep. For some reason, I thought his Thorazin had uh, reduced the cost of the Pyroblast a little bit more, mm. but I was wrong. You were thinking of eight mana. I know. Blast, I'm old school, you? man. I, I miss the old uh, eight mana pyroblast. Actually, I don't really miss it, but sometimes I still think about it. <laughs> I wonder how many of our viewers are actually playing in those days. That was a very long time ago, but this is not was. a this not that clear a turn for Diony. The fun thing about there being two Alex Strazes on the board is that both of them are begging for a move. They're both saying, "All right, use those fl th those uh, frost bolts. Use those." Fireballs on this minion and don't use it for that direct damage burn. But blows through the armor. So the armor is now removed. It's going to continue with the cycle. Looking to draw into that more direct damage you're talking about. There is that second ice land. So suddenly we're getting closer and closer to damage to pop the block. Yeah, has to put down that ice barrier because he did go to face with his Alex Ross, so He didn't trade. There's a frost nova though. Not even going to worry about it. Ooh, thought about frost bolting. Didn't do it. 
So there should definitely be the damage here to pop the block. Oh, yeah. Easily going to have it. Let's see if you can put him down to one as well. Hmm. I'm not seeing a way to get him to one. I'm seeing a two in terms of the health total for Diony with the block being popped. He's looking at his options, but he only has yeah. access to three damage and four damage spells, respectively. That is true. Going what with the cheaper Frostbolt first. Interesting. Into the Ice Lance. Yep, gonna pop the block at two, which, yep. given how much burn he has in hand, may not be relevant. That's gonna be the first Ice Block popped from Dianne. Yep, should be fine. dianne has got his second Ice Block in his hand, though. But does he have enough damage now? He doesn't quite have the cards to pop that Ice Block on Handsome Guy's side, unless he draws into a Fireball. Nope, don't nope. get it. He can only do the 12 damage with Hero Power. Yep. Do He's as gonna do it as anyway. That's right, and he's got his second Ice Block, so he'll survive one more turn, but, I mean, when you're one turn behind a Freeze Mage and a Freeze Mage Mirror, that is not a situation you're probably going to win with. So, I think Handsome Guy may have this one all locked up. It is looking like Handsome Guy will be the winner, just because, again, he's going to just pop the block once again. Easily does it, pops it at one this time. Yep. Second Ice Block is yep. gone. Even if he's able to kill off his own mad scientist, the ice barrier doesn't respond to the hero power. The hero power will go through that ice barrier. So I think we have our first top four finisher at APAC. Yeah, that's right. Handsome guy is going to get out of his group in first place. A well-played series, an interesting series, because we had so many mini, ma uh, mini matches. No, mirror matches between these two guys. But uh, yeah, Diane really not in a position that he can win this game from. Worth knowing that Diony was struggling for starting hands in a couple of those games, but he threw out the gambit. He said, look, I'm not just this guy that brings interesting deck and very famous for his priest as Diony. Yeah. He went standard this time, but standard didn't find him a win against Handsome Guy, one of the toughest opponents here, the guy who's really powered through the ladder, known for making those big, crucial mistakes in tournament matches, but two matches. So far, so good. Yeah, I mean, he's looked really good. And, uh, you know, it was close. I mean, when you have these mirror matches, it does always come down to within one or two turns of either player winning it. And so this time it was Handsome Guy. But again, Diony isn't out of the tournament yet. He's got another chance tomorrow to uh, stay alive. So we'll see if he can do it. Yeah, just looking at the brackets, we can confirm that Handsome Guy, he's made it through Group A in first position. So guaranteed a top four spot. Now Diony going to have to battle through the lower bracket against the winner of Staz and UCCU. Yep, that's right. But for now, we're going to hand it over to Frodan, who's standing with our winner, standing with Handsome Guy. Congratulations, Handsome Guy. You are the first person in the top four. I just want to ask about some initial reactions. Uh, a lot of people are pegging you to win the tournament. In fact, I was talking to some Korean players. They were saying that they think whoever wins this series wins the tournament. How does he feel about that response and support from the Korean fans? There's one day left of the tournament, and considering the fact that he beat a Korean guy, and he's he's most pro probably sure that he will win the entire tournament and win this championship. All right, well, that sounds really good confidence statement from you. I would want to ask, who do you think will get second in the group? Because it seems like right now you s cruise to a very easy victory. Do you have any predictions who will also follow you outside the group for top four? 먼저 4강에 올라가셨는데요. 다음 4강의 진출자가 누구신지 좀 예언 좀 부탁드립니다. <laughs> 어, 두 선수 다 굉장히 잘 하던데 저는 매튜 선수가 조금 더덱 상성상 유리하지 않나 싶어서 매튜 선수가 올라갈 것 같습니다. He thinks they, they are both good players, but he's thinking Matum will go up because his decks are more likely advantageous than the other people's decks. Awesome. Well, it looks like uh, we're about to wrap up here. I want to ask, uh, how are you going to prepare for day number three? Are you going to do anything special to celebrate once you're able to rest up tonight? 그 마지막을, 마지막 대회를 위해서 어떻게 준비하실 건가요? 어, 네. 오늘 숙소에 가서 그 이제 제가 붙을 가능성이 있는 선수들의 조합을 조합을 연구해서 이제 픽밴이나 이제 그 매, 중요한 매치업들을 좀 연습을 먼저 해볼 생각입니다. He's going to focus on the strategies of 
which bands he's going to pick for the opponent players. And he's going to focus on decks that he thinks is more hard to beat with his decks. All right, well, you're looking pretty solid, handsome guy, and you are the first person into the top four. Congratulations. All right, well, we're done over here. Let's send it over to TJ, who's standing by at the sidebar for a breakdown of that previous match. Thank you very much, Dan. An interesting matchup that was with both of those players pretty much having, you know, identical deck lists with some different cards here and there, but uh, still cool nonetheless. I'm joined by D2 and Brian Kibler, who are going to help break down that match. I want to get right into it. Uh, we, we've seen a lot of different types of Zoo Warlock decks, but there's been two uh, archetypes that we've seen most of. In America's and the European Championships, we saw a lot of the Zoo uh, that ran Sea Giants and Leroy Jenkins as the finisher. But now in the Asia Pacific region, we've seen three different Zoo Warlock decks that all run the Doom Guard version. So, DT, I'm going to come with you first, and th this question is more of a uh, of why why do the metas differ so much? Why do we see some players in, in some regions run strictly Doom Guard as, as the choice, and why do we see some players in other regions run strictly a different type? How do these metas differ? Well. Basically, you see a lot of you know copycat decks, a lot of net decking, right? Mm. And the Sea Giant variant is actually something that started in China, and you know it went through. Basically, it's like Columbus, right? It went west to go east. Yeah. So it went through <laughs> Europe and Americas, and now you know not quite as popular in the Asia Pacific region. Even in you know I casted some of the Japanese you know matches, and they have one Noob Guard, one Sea Giant, and it's just interesting how you know, all the variants you can get as far as people copying each other on certain ladders and seeing what they see on ladder and seeing how it feels to play those. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, Brian Kibler, what, what are the differences between these two decks? What are the strengths of the Sea Giant version and, and what are the strengths of the Doom Guard version? Well, one thing uh, that's true about the Sea Giant deck is it's a lot stronger in a field that has a lot of uh, other opponents who are also playing a lot of minions. Mm -hmm. uh, decks like Secret Paladin, for instance, it, which is actually a deck we haven't seen at all in this tournament. So it's possible that the popularity of the Murloc Paladin decks as opposed to the, the Secret versions has caused the Sea Giant versions to not really be as popular in the Asia-Pacific region. All right, well, thank you guys. Uh, let's get into one of the, the replays here. Uh, this is sort of switching gears from the Zoo, zoo Walk. We're actually gonna go into uh, game number three here. Handsome Guy had a 2-0 lead. And this is a Freeze Mage versus Druid matchup. And there was a couple of interesting turns. We're going to start from the Freeze Mage perspective here. So, D2, I want you to walk me through this turn and why Handsome Guy decided to play this Doomsayer that we're going to see him play. Right. Well, he started off with the Arcade Intellect and, you know, obviously has two mana left. And basically he has nothing left to do here, right? He can maybe coin into something like an Acolyte of Pain, but maybe maybe Dahyoni forces him to overdraw. So he decides to go for the strongest play possible with that Doomsayer. That provides him a lot of tempo on the other hand. Now, if you go for something like a Frost Nova Doomsayer, you're really committing to it and can really, you know, blow up in your face if your opponent just silences it or even just kills it another way and, and retains their board. All right, Kibler. And this is a, a play that we were all so really, really curious about. We're going to start off with the Raven Owl decision, um, which uh, the decision that he made in the card that he picked wasn't interesting. But walk me through this turn uh, in its entirety from Dahuni. Uh, well, the. The start with the Raven Idol is actually a little interesting to us because we talked about the possibility that there's a lot of powerful spells he could actually get because Druid has access to things like Bite and Healing Touch that can all offer uh, the ability to survive the Freeze Mage burst damage. He chooses to go with the creature and ends up getting Priests of a Loon, which works out quite well for him. He gets that healing regardless. Uh, the, the next decision was one that, that we were a little, a little more confused about as well. He chose to use his Keeper of the Grove but he used his Keeper of the Grove to deal damage and attacked the Doomsayer rather than simply silencing it. Uh, the upside of this is that if he does find Dr. Boom later in the game, the Boombots can't hit some Doomsayer just sitting there. So it's... There's, it's not like a play that, that has no explanation, but I, I think that it's a play that has a, a purpose that is pretty far down the road and is just kind of up in the air as to whether it'll come up at all. Yeah, D2, do you, do you agree with this play? Is it worth trying to play into those fringe cases where maybe later in the game I'll draw, I'll draw, draw Dr. Boom and maybe later in the game my Boom Bots will be soaked up by the Doomsayer? Is this a play that you agree with? I'm going to have to side with Kibler on this one. I mean, basically you're... thinking of a situation where it has to be the very end of the game, your opponent already is at a, such a life total that you die to Boom Bots and... 
And there's so many things that have to go on in the game for it to be better than five damage to the face at that moment. Yeah, at the end of the day, it didn't end up mattering too much because you know, he still took that match, but that five damage miss could have been uh, the difference between a win or a loss. So just things to think about. So uh, I thank you guys very much for your analysis on that match. But uh, we still have three matches left to go here on day two of the Asia Pacific Winter Championship. And we're gonna move into Pin Ping Ho versus Machun, the second winner's matchup. But before we do that, let's take a look at some highlights from that last match.